you how to uh, something to be careful for. And what I'm going to show you is not that it's incorrect; it's that um, it doesn't conveniently, it doesn't easily lead to the right solution. So I'm going to redo the last problem. And the first thing I'm going to do is use the identity sign to theta is two uh, cos theta sine theta. Generally, at least the uh, solve uh, solve problems that I will give to you on your uh, midterm and final will not you will not need to use the formulas on the formula page. But let's say that you are solving and uh, this is just a common mistake I see, and, and you remember, oh, I, I've seen sine 2 theta, and it equals 2 sine theta cos theta. So I'm going to make this uh, substitution. So on the left side, it's written the same order to cos theta sine theta. And then still keep the half on the right side. All right, no problem. Let's uh, remember we're solving for theta, so let's get the 2 out of here. So that's cos theta sine theta. We'll multiply both sides by a half. So half times a half is a fourth. All right, now we got a problem here. We need to figure out uh, what is theta. And unfortunately, we have theta. We have now have created two places where theta appears. And it's not very easy to figure out what, uh, uh, what is theta because it appears in two places. And if you look at our original, theta appears in exactly one place. So this is a uh, correct algebra move, but it complicates things quite a bit. The only thing you can really, only useful information you can really get out of this equation, if I multiply both sides by four, so let's actually undo this move. Well, this isn't really that useful. I'll multiply both sides by two here. So we have four cos theta sine theta equals one, and then I'll uh, hmm. let's solve for uh, sine theta. So sine theta equals we're going to divide by four and cosine theta. So this, if you knew what cosine theta was, you could then figure out sine, and likewise, if you knew what sine of theta was, you could figure out cosine. But this doesn't, we're actually further away uh, from solving for theta. So this is not easy to find theta in this equation. So generally in the solve, all the solve problems that you have, you will generally not be using identities. There are a few exceptions. The uh, what I call the spidey sense to know that you should not be doing this is if theta, if you make a substitution and theta appears more times than it did before. So again, theta appeared one time at the beginning and after I did a couple steps, theta is appearing twice. So that's definitely the wrong direction. So this is not going to nicely lead to the correct solution. <clears throat> now we're going to i uh, do two more problems, and on this next one, I'm going to put a restriction on theta. So this is solve two tan squared theta equals seek squared theta, and also negative pi less than or equal to theta less than or equal to two pi. I don't know why I'm using inequalities. I should use interval notation. So let's use that instead. So if we get that stuff. All right, so I want to uh, ensure that theta is not at any value, but theta has to be inside this interval. So it's a little bit bigger than a period. It's a period and a half. So we're going to solve it. And then at the very end, we're going to very carefully pick out uh, the solutions that fall inside this interval. And the web work problems are like this. And a lot of times in the web work answers, they ask you to put them in increasing order. Uh, so I'll try to, at the end, I'll list them in increasing order. OK. First thing you notice, this problem is different than the other problems because theta started out appearing in two places. 
Well, that's not good, but there is a nice identity. If you're gonna use an identity, make sure that theta does not appear in more places after you use it. So the identity I'm thinking of has tangent squared and secant squared in it. It is tan squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. So let's go ahead. The reason I'm gonna use this because I can turn my secant squared into tangent squared, well, plus one. And then all of a sudden I'll have only tangents. I won't have any more secants. So secant squared is tan squared theta plus one. So I wanna get all my thetas on one side, so I'm gonna subtract tangent squared theta to the other side. So I have two tan squared theta minus tan squared theta equals one. So we just subtracted tan squared theta on both sides. All right, we got two tan squared minus tan squared. That means it's just one tangent squared theta equals one. Now you can uh, square root both sides. Remember we're looking at tangent of theta and then that square algebraically should appear outside. So I could square root both sides. Remember if you're gonna square root something squared, you have plus and minus. So of course square root one is one. So tangent theta could be plus or minus one. So you usually say these correctly, tangent theta equals plus or minus one. The way you write it correctly is just like you say it. Tangent theta equals one or tangent theta equals negative one. An alternative way to solve this is factoring, which is the way I would recommend doing it. So alternate. Solution, tangent squared theta, you subtract one, and then you can factor tan theta minus one, tan theta plus one equals zero, and then use the zero product property. And this property states that when you multiply two numbers and get zero, uh, that either uh, of those two numbers could be zero. So what that means is tan theta minus one equals zero or tan theta plus one equals zero. Then solve for tangent theta. So add one to both sides or on this equation, we're subtracting one on both sides. So good news is these agree. If you're doing algebra correctly, you should always get agreement at the end. So once we're here, how do we actually figure out what theta is? That is what we're, remember these say solve, but the implicit, we're solving for theta. So solve for the variable you see. <clears throat> okay, unit circle. And where does tangent equal, we'll go with the positive one first. So tangent theta, is gonna equal one whenever x equals y. And that happens here, the halfway point in that quadrant, and when they're both negative down there. Now I don't necessarily need to know the values here. If I write them out, it's one over square root two, one over square root two. Remember this is not theta, that's the x, y value on the unit circle. The actual angle is pi over four. And that means the angle down here Five pi over four. All right, that was tangent theta equals positive one. So we just took care of that. Now it's not all the solutions. I could do a rotation, so I can add as many rotations to these as I want. Uh, let's go ahead and get the um, negative one. So this is the uh, equation on the right side, tangent theta equals negative one. So that means either x is uh, positive and y is negative, or y is positive and x is negative but when you divide them, they should cancel out to negative one. So that happens in halfway into quadrant two and four, right there. And I'll draw these in blue. So this angle will be three 
pi over 4 and the angle down here, 7 pi over 4. And if you count in pi over 4s, let's see, this is 4 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4. So you can count in fourths, and this is a little easier to see. So all four angles that I wrote down inside the circle are between uh, negative pi and 2 pi. No problem. However, these are not the only solutions. I can add rotations, positive or negative, to any of these four angles. These are spaced out really nicely. So if I write down all solutions, so I'm going to add, I'm, all I'm doing is adding rotations. So to get all solutions, theta equals pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. Theta equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. And 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k for any integer k. Uh, now this is all solutions, including ones way outside the interval negative pi to pi. So this, these are way more solutions than I want for this problem because this problem restricts uh, negative pi to 2 pi. So that's all solutions. Now I want all solutions. So the actual answer will switch back to regular marker. So we're only going to have a limited number in here. Another thing to notice, all the solutions, they follow a nice pattern. Now I could take this angle right here, do one full rotation to it, and get back to itself. I can actually do less than a full rotation. What if I do a pi over 2 rotation, or a 90 degree or right angle rotation? I will actually hit the next solution. Well, that's convenient. And then if I rotate another pi over 2, I get the next solution, and another pi over 2, the next solution, and another pi over 2, the next solution, next solution, next solution. So these are spaced out really nice. So I can summarize I can summarize them very nicely. You can pick any angle. I'll just pick the easy, small, positive angle, pi over 4, plus pi over 2k. So <clears throat> if they have a nice spacing, these are all spaced out with pi over 2. You can just summarize them like this. Just uh, take all four of them and compact them down into uh, just this one form here. So let's lay these out on a number line. So I definitely get pi over 4. The next one I get 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. If I keep going, 9 pi over 4, 11 pi over 4. You get the point, dot, dot, dot. Now if I go the other direction, I'm going to basically use k, uh, negative k. So k is negative 1. We get negative pi over 4. Now notice that's just another name for that uh, angle on the unit circle there. So that's negative pi over 4. I could keep going. Negative 3 pi over 4. Keep going. Negative 5 pi over 4 etc 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 all right this is a nice way to lay the solutions out in increasing order so they're laid out on the number line so they're in order now i'm going to apply this restriction here so what does that look like on our number line well, where is 2 pi 2 pi is going to be right here between 7 and 9 pi so that's 2 pi 
or 8 pi over 4 if you want fractions to not suck. Now, where's negative pi? And there is a reason I stopped where I did for these values. Here is negative pi or negative 4 pi over 4. So what solutions are in between? We got all six solutions right here. And these, picking only these six solutions, are the actual uh, answers to the original problem. So all solutions in here are, and we'll go negative 3 pi over 4. Okay, so this is the actual answer to the problem. So we had to really uh, reduce the number of solutions, throw out all the ones not inside that interval. There is still a nice pattern here if you want. You can summarize this again. This gets a little bit tedious. So you can, uh, let's see, theta equals negative 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 2k. Now, it would not be correct to say any integer for, k, uh, for any integer k. Uh, I cannot use that many integers. In fact, there's six solutions, so I'm going to have six values. The way I li lined it up, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And k equals 0 corresponds to that solution. k equals 1, k equals 2, 3, 4, 5. And if you want to check this real quick, let's just try k equals 5. So theta equals negative 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 2 times 5. Now to add fractions, you need common denominator. 10 pi over 4, negative 3 plus 10 is 7 pi over 4. And yes, that is the last solution right there. OK, so that, those are two ways to line it up. I don't really recommend you try this uh, shortcut method to write it down. Uh, just too many chances for error. Web work doesn't take. Uh, doesn't take this summary right here. I think web work has you list them out. So I generally recommend, unless there is a huge number of solutions, that you just write down the solutions. Uh, or if there's no restrictions, either one of these would be okay. Because again, you can only you cannot write down infinite solutions. Uh, it would take an infinite amount of time, and we only have eight weeks at the most. We're going to do one more problem now. We're going to skip the inequalities. They're a little bit tricky. You don't really need them until uh, you get into calculus. And really, even then, you only need them in uh, Calc 2, the trig inequalities in Calc 2. So we're going to solve 3 cos theta plus 3 equals 2 sine squared theta. So this is kind of like the last problem because theta is appearing twice and we want it to eventually appear one time if possible. So one of the first issues we have is we got a cosine mixed with a sine or a sine squared. So we need to convert everything to cosines or sines. You could technically turn cosine into something with sine, but it's going to take quite a bit more work. Let's turn sine squared into something with cos squared. So you need to know the cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. Solve for sine squared theta is 1 minus cos squared theta. So it's probably really obvious we need parentheses when you look at it this form in this form. I don't know why I'm still writing in blue. 
All right, we'll distribute. All right, let's get all the cosines together. I'd like my square term to be positive, so let's uh, add two cos squared theta to both sides. And while we're at it, let's subtract that two also. So we got nothing left on the right side. So I subtracted uh, everything to the other side. So I subtracted two and then added two cos squared theta. So plus three minus two is plus one. So this looks tricky. We're supposed to solve for theta. We have theta appearing twice, and one of uh, which is inside of a cos squared. So let's write out cos theta squared with proper notation. And I'm gonna intentionally put a extra parentheses there. Let's solve a similar problem. Except I'm gonna replace theta with x. <clears throat> So now let's solve for x. So how do you solve here? Wow, that should be a three x. Hmm. Now we can solve for x. All right, how do you solve for x here? You got quadratic uh, formula you could use or complete the square, or we make it lucky and factor. So I'm gonna go with factoring. So if we factor, Hopefully it's gonna turn into two X in the first factor and just an X in the second. And I know I need to make a one. So let, and everybody needs to be positive because both of these are positive. So let's just guess and check. So two X times X is two X squared, got that. Two X plus X gives me three X. So that's the inside outside part. And then uh, one times one is one. So yes, this does factor correctly. And now I'm gonna come back to the original here and just uh, where I see X, I'm gonna put uh, cos theta right there. So that's how it factors. You can FOIL it out and check for yourself, but it FOILs out exactly like it does with that blue marker on the right side. All right, two numbers or two expressions multiplied by make zero. Zero product property says that individually either one could be zero. ZPP, zero product property. Two cos theta plus one equals zero or cos theta plus one equals zero. So solving for cos theta. So subtract one divided by two or cos theta equals negative one. All right, let's get our unit circle, figure out x is either negative one half or minus one. So the negative one half has two points on the unit circle. It's probably the worst circle I've drawn this quarter. It looks like an egg. All right, so we got cos theta is negative one or cos theta is negative one half. So I'm just thinking about x values. That gives me three points in the unit circle. What are the three angles here? One, two, three. Better switch colors so I can see this. So first one's two pi over three. Next one's kind of easy, that's pi. And the last one is four pi over three. And of course I can add as many rotations uh, as I want to to this. So our solution will be theta equals, we'll go small to big, two pi over three plus two pi k. Next solution, pi plus two pi k. Next solution, four pi over three plus two pi k. 
And if you really don't like to write the uh, K in the integers, you can write out in English. You can write any integer K. So that is our solution. If you're trying to get creative with a pattern, um, there it is true that that's pi over three, and that's also pi over three. However, if I turn another pi over three, that's not a solution down there. So that x value of positive one half is not a solution. So I can't. Uh, if I had, if I just add a uh, pi over three, I would get extra solutions. So unfortunately. We don't have all these solutions, so I can't get more clever with this pattern. So we'll take all that stuff back off. So there's a nice pi over three separation, but if I use pi over three, I'll get extra solutions. And remember, whenever in doubt, you wanna make sure you're solving, where's the original? The original's right here. So make sure you're solving that right there. And just real quick. This gets back to our very first one. If you went back and resolved, oh no, it only has one solution. So just make sure whenever you're solving that your solution works in the original. So in that very first problem we did in this section, just make sure your, your solution actually solves the original equation.